the intelligence service of the SS, known to the whole world as the SD. SS Security Service appeared in Germany in 1931. Reinhard Heydrich became its permanent leader. At first, the SD was exclusively engaged in identifying the so-called enemies of the party and organizing surveillance of them. Later, the SD sent these enemies of the party to prisons or concentration camps. At its core, the SD was something of an intelligence organization that monitored the mood of the country and identified potential enemies of the Reich. The SD established an extensive espionage network of snitches, informers, and other indifferent citizens of Germany who helped identify all disadvantaged individuals. In general, the boundaries between the SD, the Gestapo, and the security police were quite blurred. This fuzziness was practically evident in 1939, when the General Directorate for Imperial Security, RSHA, was established, which included the SD itself and the security police, consisted of the criminal police and the Gestapo. Therefore, when speaking of the activities of the SD, one can include the Gestapo as well, since there was no fundamental difference between these units. Of course, the roles were clearly distributed. The SD identified the enemies, and then the Gestapo dealt with them. However, quite often, they identified unreliable elements and did their life in the dungeons of the SD. Before the Second World War, the executions of those sentenced took place in relatively stationary conditions, that is, usually in prison yards. This, it should be noted, concerned exclusively the enemies of the Reich, and in no case applied to persons of Jewish nationality who were first massively forced to leave Germany and then also massively sent to concentration camps. If the guilt of a spy or an enemy of the Reich was proven, then he was executed, as mentioned above in the prison yard. It could have been either a firing squad or a hanging. Strangely enough, the SD executioners did not particularly like the nose, preferring, apart from firing squad, beheading. Guillotines were installed either in the prison yards or in the cellar of the SD. Before execution, the prisoner was often given an injection in the neck so that he would not turn his head, and then laid on the guillotine. However, with the outbreak of World War II, in anticipation that the Reich would have a huge number of enemies in the occupied lands, the services of the SD were significantly expanded. So-called Einsatzkommandos and Einsatzgruppen were created, which were involved in solving so-called specific tasks. Moreover, it should be noted here that the opinion that only collaborators, residents of the occupied territories, served in such groups and teams does not correspond to reality. Yes, from the moment of occupation, local renegades also came to the service, but initially, the main backbone of such teams were exclusively Germans. For example, Einsatzgruppe B, before the attack on the Soviet Union, had among its staff 521 officers, non-commissioned officers, a soldier and a driver, and a company of the 9th Reserve Police Battalion was also attached to it. Einsatzgruppen and SD teams began their so-called work almost immediately after the occupation. For example, the first result of such work even caused mass indignation in the world community. This is the infamous massacre of the professors at the Jagiellonian University in Krakow by the Einsatzgruppe Landberg. The group acted strictly in accordance with the instructions of Hitler, who before the start of the Second War openly stated, every one of the upper classes in Poland that we can find must be eliminated. If anyone takes their place, they should be taken into custody and dealt with at the appropriate time. The sending of professors to concentration camps, as mentioned above, caused a serious international outcry. So, at that time, Hitler was forced to turn back, freeing scientists. True, the mistake was taken into account, and a year later, the head of the general government, occupied Poland, Hans Frankse, declared that the problems of the upper class of Poland must be resolved immediately and on the ground. As the example of such a local solution policy, the mass execution of Polish scientists in occupied Lviv was organized by the same Lemberg group. Several dozens of Polish scientists, doctors and teachers were shot. Moreover, in 1943, the remains of all those executed were removed from the ground, burned, 
after which the executioners scattered their ashes in the wind. However, the executions were not the most terrible deeds, no matter how cynical it may sound, in comparison with what the SD brigades and groups did both on the territory of occupied Europe and the Soviet Union. One of the main tasks facing the SD was the so-called final solution of the Jewish question. Therefore, in addition to mass deportation to concentration camps, the SD was also engaged in the mass extermination of Jews in the ghetto. Initially, in order not to anger the world community, under the control of the SD, Jews were transported to the Soviet Union where mass executions were carried out in the forests. Later, when it became absolutely unimportant to Hitler what the world community thought of him, the fig leaf of pseudo-compliance with international laws was discarded. One of the most striking examples of the activities of the SD was the suppression of the uprising in the Warsaw Ghetto. It was the Einsatzkommandos who carried out the final cleansing of the territory, burning the survivors with flamethrowers, filling sealers and premises with fire, so as not to leave the survivors any chance. Cases have been documented when even the Jews who had already surrendered to the so-called warriors of the SD were stabbed on the spot with bayonets, beaten to death or hanged. Everything depended on the degree of ingenuity in the inflamed brains of the executioners. Ruthlessly SD dealt with the civilian population, which supported the resistance. So in Poland, when the inhabitants of one of the villages fed and heated a detachment of the whole army, in fact, Polish partisans who fought the Germans. A group of SD arrived to punish. All residents were herded into a duck hole, which was thrown with hand grenades. Later, the dead were buried by the residents of neighboring villages. It should be noted that if in Europe the SD was still trying to observe at least some pretended rules of decency, then in the occupied territory of the Soviet Union, the SD no longer cared about saving its face. All persons of Jewish nationality whom the SD met on their way were mercilessly shot on the spot without even being sent to any concentration camps. Today it is hard to believe, but the SD officers detained after the war and during the trials gave more than terrible testimonies. For example, here is a document that fell into the hands of the judges of the Nuremberg Tribunal, which was sent to Berlin by the head of the already mentioned Einsatzgruppe B. The report is dated October 19, 1941 in the course of checks on the roads leading from Mogilev, carried out with the help of the police, 135 people were detained, mostly Jews. 125 people were shot. In the agreement with the commander of the transit camp in Mogilev, a search was carried out for Jews and officials. 126 persons were identified and shot. A special action was carried out during which 1,013 Jewish men and women were shot. 835 Jews of both sexes were shot. It was precisely in the hands of the SD that there were mass executions of people of Jewish nationality, the Polish intelligentsia, as well as everyone whom the Nazis considered dangerous or racially inferior elements. Let us repeat that among all the occupied territories, the SD deployed with all its might in the Soviet Union. Long before the emergence of various collaborationist formations, it was the SD that showed the example of how to deal with everyone who was subject to liquidation. Executions have already become an outright luxury for civilians. Under the command of SD officers, privates and non-commissioned officers drove the condemned into sheds and burned them alive. Some were stabbed to death with bayonets or daggers. There are enough cases when the SD buried the unfortunate alive, or tying stones around their necks dumped them into the river. Since 1939, the abbreviation SD has become synonymous with the word punisher. Even today, it is impossible to reproduce the diabolical ingenuity of the so-called warriors of the Einsgruppen and their brigades in carrying out actions of retaliation and intimidation. And the methods for carrying out such actions were very far from, no matter how cynical it sounds, the previously practiced so-called civilized executions, hangings, and sending to the guillotines. Therefore, it is not surprising that even at the Nuremberg trials, the case of the leaders of the SD detachments and teams was considered as part of a separate trial. Moreover, not even the most terrible facts and testimonies were cited at the trial. But what was said was enough to make one's hair stand on end.
The main fact that was clearly and ambiguously stated was that, in accordance with the perverted racial theory, the SD units committed genocide of the Polish population and the population of the Soviet Union. The accused committed war crimes by being executors, accomplices, ordering, obeying, participating in activities, being associated with plans and activities, and being members of organizations or groups associated with atrocities and offenses against persons and property, forming violations of laws and customs of war, including, but not limited to, the killing and mistreatment of prisoners of war and the civilian population of countries and territories under enemy occupation or otherwise controlled by Germany, an arbitrary destruction and devastation unjustified by military necessity. <laughs>